Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another early game playbook video, this time featuring Yan Bai Hu, the White Tiger. Now, Yan Bai Hu was a faction added into the game through a free LC that was launched alongside a World Betrayed DLC. So he does have a 194 start as well as the 190 start. The 190 start is free to all players, so we're going to be covering the 190 start first. Now, we had a Let's Play series on Yan Bai Hu, so if you guys have seen that one, you guys already know a lot of tip and trick while playing this faction. But we have never showed the 190 start, and it's actually really easy. The game set the 194 start as easy, but the starting situation for 190 is normal. But really, after experiencing this start, I feel like this start is actually easier because there's less strong factions around you at the start. All the red you see on the map are Ha Empire, and most of these territories are actually empty. They're deserted counties, so there is no garrison. It's just a free take when you walk up to it. So it's a matter of rapid expansion early on to build a good economic base and to wipe out the other faction that shares the south with you in Sunjian. So that's kind of our goal here. Uh, our background bonus does give us stock, which is really powerful. It's basically the same mechanic that hidden axe units from Zhengjiang's faction play with. You remain invisible on all terrain type, even as you move. Uh, it won't basically be seen by the enemy until you're up close, and this allows a lot of different gameplay mechanics. Other than that, you also have 5% replenishment bonus. So replenishment is just strong overall, and not that the bandits need any more replenishment bonus because they do have shared the spoils, which automatically boosts your unit by 25% replenishment. But a passive 5% bonus is obviously something that's good and you're not going to really refuse it. Now where his factions start falling off is his with faction specialization. The White Tiger Confederation, in my opinion, is really bad. You basically have to maintain anywhere from 1 to 8 coalition or ally members to be able to take advantage of some decreased research time for bandit network and reduce recruitment costs for non-bandit units. Both of these are not very essential to gameplay and adding too many coalition members is a difficult and be very troublesome because they sometimes get you into wars that you don't want to be part of. So I tend to play without focusing at all on the White Tiger Confederation. Uh, but if you want to get one level of this, uh, Wang Long, who is your neighbor, is a good potential early game target to be a coalition partner. Now his unique features is two units right here, White Tiger Warriors and White Tiger Raiders. Both are available for all characters starting at rank 1 or higher, even though I noticed a bug in the game where you can't recruit White Tiger Raiders for some reason. I don't know why, but I just can't seem to figure out why you can't recruit these units at all, even though I had no trouble recruiting them on our 194 campaign. But on the 190 campaign, it seems like they're not available. I don't know if this is an issue with the patch, but I'm probably going to bring it up with the developers in the future. Uh, regardless, uh, the unit here, just introducing them, the White Tiger Warriors is a two-handed axe unit, and because they have axe, they do well against shielded units since it reduces 35% of their evasion. It also increases the splash attack, so the weapon does splash damage attack, so make them pretty good melee fighters. The problem is because it's a two-handed axe, there is no shield, so you don't have any range block chance, but this can be fixed because you can give your unit stock. And if they have stock, they can close the gap between them and the range unit without being noticed on the field and can launch basically close range charges on the enemy front line. Uh, the White Tiger Raiders are one of my favorite units for Yan Bai Hu. So they are archer units with a spear. So they're a dual weapon. They have access to poison arrows like most bandit archers. And you can basically have them snipe and stock. So basically they remain hidden on the field and they remain hidden when firing. So you can alternate a poison volley, lay the poison on the enemy unit, and then wait 15 seconds, and then fire again. So you let the poison do the damage rather than the arrow, and you can actually do tons of damage with this unit if you have some patience. Next, you have a unique building here, but this is a unique building that's for the minor settlement options. This is the county uh, minor attachment building. There's usually four of these, but for Yan Bai Hu, there's a fifth one. Uh, this building plays along the theme of tribal networks, which is kind of his playstyle focus, where you get uh, research rate de uh, reductions and also some food from banditry. It's not very good. I prefer to just go with black market and max out your income in your minor settlements. And then lastly, you have mercenary treaties, which is available to all bandit factions as well as Lu Bu's faction. This is one of my favorite mechanics and it's very, very strong. 
except for you can't really utilize it well in the early game as Yan Bai Hu. You can get it around the mid game, and the way I like to do it with mercenary treaties is I like to peace out with Dong Zhuo and then make him our mercenary master so that we can fight most of the map for him so that we get paid by Dong Zhuo to fight his enemies and people who we have to fight anyways. For example, Sun Jian, and that way we can uh, make money while destroying factions that we were going to destroy anyways. Our noteworthy character is Yan Yu, who's our younger brother. Uh, he's a legendary champion in the game. Uh, pretty decent character. Uh, very luck laster bonus on the Tiger Cub. It's only plus five melee evasion. He starts out as your heir, but because you're a bandit faction, you have flexibility in changing your heir at any time to anyone. Doesn't have to be a family member since it's called next in line. So if you can find a better character, definitely swap him out. He can be just you know a regular court character. Uh, he's decent, but not great. Uh, Yan Bai Hu is going to be your star here. So let's jump into the game and take a look at everything inside. We're doing this on Legendary Legendary 40 Minutes. So see you guys in game. Alrighty, we're loaded up into the game. Establish your power. Even here, far from the capital, chaos is spreading Yan Bai Hu. Your lands are threatened by ambitious warlords. Their greed cannot go unpunished. Those who call the south home and others around the land sympathetic to your cause must now rally to defend a way of life in danger of vanishing forever. And our first mission is to capture a settlement actually. It's not to engage in the army in front of us, even though we have to do that. And the main reason for this, I believe, is the usual reward for the first fight is some sort of military supply bonus. And since the bandit faction functions from loot instead of military supplies, they didn't want to over uh, saturate you with loot, which actually slows you down. So they skip that mission and instead you have to capture a county, which is usually the second mission for most factions. But before we jump into the game here, uh, let's take a look at what we have. We start out with the town of Xindu. It's nothing to really admire, and the building option for uh, these towns for bandits are very limited. There's a missing building in each category, and it actually hampers your economy quite a bit. You kind of have to readjust and focus on banditry income. And my favorite building right now for the bandit faction is actually this tributary shrine which provides post-battle loot as well as plus 5% uh, faction-wide tribute and diplomacy and income from mercenary treaties. I feel like this was kind of underrated in my earlier attempts playing the bandits. But after taking a look at some of the you know, rewards you could get if you build this in every single town that you own, you actually can get a lot of bonuses throughout your game with this. So we have a Han army in front of us, Wukong. The poor guy keeps dying in the game. He's the first enemy that Sun Ce destroys in 194, and he's the first uh, army that Yan Bai Hu destroys in 190. He's at uh, 64. We're not really going to recruit him even if we capture him. So most likely we're going to challenge him to a duel in the first fight so that we get massive amount of experience from winning duels and level up our leader who starts out the game only at rank 1. Now, item-wise, uh, that's quite a haul. We got four items, two regular, two bronze, which is fine. Uh, it could be better, could be worse. Uh, but we also start with tons of items that we could use in diplomacy. For example, Yan Bai Hu here has uh, his unique gold weapon, the White Tiger's Claw. It's a decent weapon, a pretty good mix of base damage and armor piercing damage, as well as a boost to uh, melee damage on the weapon itself. Expertise and instinct just makes him stronger. These unique armors, what gives him the stock ability, makes him faster, which allows him to kite enemy cavalry a bit better when you're trying to lay off after a poison volley. You start out with the white stallion. This is a silver horse. This is a very good trade item. You could potentially trade this away very early on. Uh, it's not very good in combat because it's slower and you don't really need to charge much with poison volley. And you also start out with a composite bow. You actually start out with two composite bows. Uh, but sadly, you somehow cannot trade these composite bows in diplomacy. It must be a weird bug, but these bows are non-tradable, which is quite weird. But you all get a stone pig. It's always here for you. And you always will get a builder. So pretty good items to start with. Uh, you also have a pretty big roster of generals, as you can see here. So here is Huang Longluo. He is a vanguard, a bandit vanguard who has pillager. So he has 25% post-battle loot income increase if he's commanding an army. So we're actually going to fully utilize this and have him as our commanding general early on so that we can take some more uh, income. And then he has the burn trait, which is obviously amazing. 
Yan Yu, our brother. We already talked about his background bonus being melee evasion. His traits are okay, and he starts out level 1 as well. We're probably just going to put him on Simon so he can gain a couple of levels early on to get reach, and then we'll send him out onto the battlefield. Uh, these two characters are not very good, and we're going to be firing them on turn 1. And we're going to be using all our money on turn 1 to recruit generals, which is something we don't usually do. But we have really good generals in our candidate pool. Uh, only bandit characters have candidates on turn 1. And she is a sentinel character with poison volley, a bandit. And Chen Yu is very historical, actually, serves Cao Cao. And he's here for us for some reason in the game. And he will always have the burn trait as well, as well as ambitious. So although both of these increase his ambition for independence as administrator, he does give us plus 15% income from all sources if we make him our first underling, which we will do. So we'll be spending our early game 2000 income that we start with, both on these two characters, while firing the other two that we no longer need. And we'll keep Huang Rongluo just because he has Burn as well. So we start the game with two Burn officers, uh, two generals with Poison Valdi. She starts out rank 3. Fugitive officer is also very good because the first army that she will be in will have 10% recruitment cost reduction just by having her inside. Uh, we're going to go down this way on her skill tree. Craft, which gives us three wooden stake. Uh, it's okay, it's not great, but it's, it's decent. And then we're going to get stealth. This is what we really want. So stealth here gives us stock, which we need. Because this allows you to sneak up to enemy formations unseen to fire off a perfectly lined up poison volley. And we also want to get tenacity of steel quite early on as well. So we'll be applying that. Now our court is fixed, and before we set out to fight, we want to get our diplomatic dealings out of the way. And we don't see many factions on the map, right? Dong Zhuo we're at war with. Very expensive right now, but as we fight, and at the end of this episode, I think we can achieve peace with a cost around 17-ish. And we're going to do that so that he can start become our mercenary master as we get mercenary treaties uh, with him constantly to wipe out different factions on the map. Uh, Liu Yao to our north is going to be a threat, but we want him to control Jian Ye for a while so that he can build up the commandery for us. Because we don't have a lot of the buildings available to us, in particularly State Workshop, we want him to level up Jian Ye for us so that he can leave us at least a level 3 or level 4 State Workshop so that we can utilize that as our income going forward in the campaign. Wang Lang is our buddy here in the beginning, who actually kind of like us because we apparently share the same enemies with Yellow Turbans, but we haven't declared war on the Yellow Turbans, so I don't know where this come from. But regardless, historically, you guys were allies, so you get a nice big deal here with the trade. You can take a look at his items in case there's anything you uh, could want, you can trade for them. But here, I'm just going to ask for some cash. I believe you can get 63 from him. Now you could potentially get a mercenary treaty against the old turbans, but I highly, highly advise against that because the old turbans are spread out. There's only two very small counties here. You're gonna run out of enemies before the 20 turn of the mercenary treaty is up, and you're gonna get in big trouble by not completing the treaty and getting hit with diplomatic penalties. So you're gonna want him to actually go through the south and claim some of these empty lands. So you're not going to fight him early on. He's going to help you colonize cheaply and you can wipe him out later on. Right now, if you want a coalition with him, it's quite pricey. This price will come down as the trade deal will generate uh, better attitudes between him and you. So let's just get this deal signed. And that's all we really need to do in the diplomacy department. And we can jump into our fights here. So this fight right here... Uh, we're going to showcase it just to showcase how stock works and also to tell you guys how to get most of the experience on him. It's pretty uh, intuitive as with most of our other guides, but let's jump in here. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up into the fight. We have guerrilla deployment and stock. Uh, we're going to hide these guys in the back. You see how they're invisible? We're also invisible and we can actually put ourselves right here and they still can't see us. And you turn dueling off. You always want to be the one challenging because you get more experience that way. We want to loop ourselves to about here. So we have a pretty clear shot on some of the units here with our poison volley. 
Now the instant you fire, they're gonna see you because you're making a aggressive attack option. So we can sneak up pretty close, and we're gonna fire. The general is probably standing right in front of him. I don't know if we can scratch him. Maybe we can. Yep, we poison him. That's all good. Ask him to duel. This is gonna net you enough experience just from the duel itself uh, to level yourself up. Uh, they're ready fleeing. Uh, we'll play this on fast. Uh, you win this duel without any issues. You're just that much stronger with a legendary weapon and legendary armor. Look all these poison. They died from poison right here. There we go. Uh, oh, they routed. So you can probably get back on your horse and chase them. And whatever you kill is going to be extra experience for you. Maybe chase that group first because they're running away. Ah, they're so close to the edge of the map already as we gorilla deployed. But it's fine. That one duel should be enough to level us ourselves up. Alrighty. So we want income here. And we leveled up. So where you want to go with Yan Bai Hu is you don't want to actually go down for stealth because you already have stock from your armor. So you just want to go from the top tier here. You might even want to grab Patience, and you also want to grab Poison Arrow, which is going to be kind of our first army. Where we're going to have a bunch of archers utilize Poison Arrow to uh, destroy the enemy here. So that's ready, and we can take the Lumberyard. It's empty, so no garrison, free take. In this situation, when it's empty, so the settlement level is at zero already, you want to go with Loot and Occupy, even though most of the time you go with Occupy, because you don't lose any pe pe uh, population because it's an uh, empty commandery. You gain extra income you would have missed. The loot doesn't really matter. And you don't actually lose a level because you're already at level zero. So take the free money. Uh, sack of withdrawal is... I don't know. Can you actually attack again on the same turn with the same army? You probably can't attack the same turn. If you had two armies, maybe you can cycle and have the first army do this, have the second army do this to get the most money out of it. But right now, loot and occupy is just fine. And we finish our first mission, support from the people. And our second mission is your economy grow, but here it says you have to construct or upgrade this building inside Xingdu's town. So if we build in the county, it doesn't count, it has to be in the town. And that's quite important, that means we're allowed to time when we want to trigger it. And we want to trigger it once we have more counties from different uh, commanderies, so that we can uh, utilize those three turns with potentially three builds rather than one build because building slots are limited per commandery here. Uh, we're going to get rid of our retinue because this commandery, this county here has no garrison and this county here also has no garrison. So there's really no need for army at all at this point. And you can save yourself a good chunk of upkeep just by getting rid of these guys. And you also don't want your loot to go full. So loot management is something you have to do with bandit factions. Because as you can see, even at the 60 level that we are at now, you're losing 10% movement speed. And if you come full loot, you lose 25% movement speed. So you always want to pop them out after capturing a settlement and then change their stance to sharing the spoils. This way you can reduce the amount you gain and even maybe get it lower so that you can move faster on the map. All right, so we don't have any more money to build anything this turn because we spend it all on our generals, and that is totally fine. The only thing we have to do is pick a reform. So the bandit reform, real quick, is based on the map of the bandit network. Each commandery is a separate reform. This one right here is shaded in because Xingdu, we capture two of the three counties, so we get a discount on the research time. Uh, if you look at Poyang, for example, it has four counties, so the cost of the reform is always twice the number of counties. But here is eight turns because there's four counties. And if you look at somewhere like Beihai or like uh, Taishan, where you have two counties, then it's four turns. And if you have three counties, it's six turns and so forth. And for each of those counties inside that you capture, you reduce it by a turn. So here, Xingdu is usually six turns. Because we have two pieces of it, it becomes four turns. So that's kind of how it works. 
And we do want to pick this one up, not only because we get a discount on it, but because most of the good reform we want are the purple ones here. And all the way over here, we want the movement speed from the fringe ones that are uh, more nomadic based. Um, this is why we kind of had a migration strategy when we featured Zhengxiang, because how good these reforms over here are. So most of the ones down here are pretty luck laster, so you kind of want to just move up right away. So that's a pretty good reform to pick first. And the second one, I usually go for this just because the satisfaction boost, population boost, and character experience are all really helpful. And it's also on the way of going up. All right, so that settles our reform business. Uh, we kind of talked about the White Tiger Confederation when we were looking at the faction select screen. But basically, each of these small dots represent a member of a coalition or alliance member you have. And once you have one, you'll be at tier one. Once you get two more to three, you get tier two. And then two more to five, you get tier three. And finally, at eight, you get tier four. And at tier four, you get a bunch of discount. The first four discount are to research time. And the four categories are the four different colors that are on the reform map. And then finally, a minus 20% uh, recruitment cost for non-bandit units which are unlocked through your reforms so it's a very reform based uh faction bonus but it's very hard to get eight at tier one when you have one you get three percent four percent two percent five percent four percent very small numbers so i don't feel like it's worth it and you get double that and then you get triple that and you get five times that so uh, if you can get some natural coalitions easily uh, maybe get the first one with Wang Long a bit later Right now he's asking for 7.9, but as the trade deal flow and as we get stronger, he's going to lower his price and you can easily use him as an early uh, coalition partner just to get the first tier if you value this small amount of bonuses here. All right, uh, but overall our faction's good. We have all the deals we want and we can continue our turn here. All righty, turn two, we got another item, Overseer. Okay, that's a wonderful item to get because it increases movement range. And we're going to actually put that on Yen Bai Hu. Uh, we could have put on a bunch of things. Uh, public order bonus, experience bonus, but we're going to just use him. Now, what we should do, or what probably we should have done last turn, is actually make him our administrator right away when we got him. Uh, kind of forgot about that last turn, since we weren't building anything. But we do have a builder item, so we can give it to him. And if you have any resolve or expertise item, you can give it to him as well. And we're going to throw him in here as our administrator. So that's going to help us when we do decide to build stuff. We're going to put him on normal stance, have him attack the weapon craftsman. It's empty, so it's once again a free take. And we're also going to loot and occupy because it's a level zero. Same thing applies. And also we're going to pop out and change stance so that we don't lose speed. Meanwhile, since this is a rapid expansion strategy, we're also going to send an army over here to the MT commandery here and take it from the Yellow Turbans. So first we raise the army. We're going to send out our administrator just because he's cheap. And we also forgot to do assignment last turn. Shame on us. But we want to put Yan Yu there so he can gain some experience. Put him in the town. Get rid of his retinue. And why we summon him is to use him as a proxy to give our second general some movement. And the second general we're going to summon is going to be Huang Longluo. We're going to have him go over there and capture the empty commander for us. Also going to get rid of his retinues. And then we're just going to recall him. That way he gets movement. And this we summon him because he's also gaining lack of purpose. Uh, so to keep him happy we can do this. You can also give him a stone pig if you want. And we're going to have him actually go on march and go as far as he can over here so he can attack quite very soon. All right, so I think now we're good. We actually have the Simon and everyone in place. This army has moved. We kept them on the right stance and we can attack the copper mine next turn. Um, so let's continue here. All righty, uh, turn three here. We got another item, which is great for diplomatic deals later on. Change his stance. This is also free. Declare war. He doesn't actually have a garrison. Loot and occupy. And his job here is done. You can actually recall him now. 
There is still a yellow turban territory here, but we're going to let Wang Long take that so he has a path to start colonizing the empty lands of the south for us. So this is as far as we can we should go here. And over here, Yan Bai Hu is going to solo this mine right here. Now this mine has a garrison, but it's very easy to defeat and uh, we're going to show it. It's very fast. Alrighty, we're loaded up in here. Uh, once again, we have stocks, so we're invisible, which allow us to capture these gates because they will be hiding over here because they can't see you at the beginning. And it's a free capture. You just don't want to bump into any of the civilians because they can reveal you. Yeah, much like the hidden axe units, uh, because you have this stock ability, most garrisons are very easy to take because the towers basically become yours. We're going to loop around these guys as much as we can just so that they don't see us. We want to come over here and fire off one of our poison volleys. Slow down in case. They're probably going to reveal us a little bit, but we can probably become invisible again. Alright, just in case they charge us. Fire. There we go. Look at all that poison spread. And if they don't charge us, we can just stand here. We'll become invisible very soon again. Right, right now. And we can just wait for cooldowns. I don't know where that cavalry is going, but it's fine. Yeah, it just like disappeared over here. I don't know why. Uh, you basically want to get all, at least three of your Valdis through, just weaken them right now. Oh, uh, they charged us from the other side. Okay, we just have to loop them out. We're faster than them. Even if you don't have the Overseer, which boosts your speed, you should have 99 speed because of your armor. And that cavalry has 95. And we're just going to come to this side if they're going to stand over there, charge this. Oh, they repositioned. Annoying. So if they reposition, we can reposition too. Let them have it. Back off. Poison lasts 30 seconds, so let it take its course. They're probably going to come back here. Uh, or not. Okay. Ah, I couldn't select it. I want to shoot them. Gotta move up this angle. Come on, can we fire in time? Uh, we kind of got them. Yeah, we just want them poisoned. Charge all the infantry. They route quite easily. And then once the cavalry is the only unit left, they route pretty easily too. There we go. Charge these guys. Last one left. There we go. And we won. Very simple here. Alrighty. But here you want to occupy because you don't want to reduce the settlement level. And then after you capture this, you have to convert the Han version into the Bandit version. Uh, so just have a conversion. You don't have to wait for your, your Kami Girl here because the conversion costs never get discounted. So you actually want to do it this turn. As for Yan Bai Hu, we can pick up Ruthlessness. We also want to move him out this way. Our next target is the fishing port. And you want to kind of reduce it by a big chunk here to actually get rid of the minus 10% campaign movement speed as well. And since this is a rapid expansion, what we want to do here is actually summon out our general here. And what we want to do is use him as a proxy for her. We've been kind of waiting. And we'll get rid of her retinues and do the same thing as we did earlier. Recall him. And have her headed over here. There is a high army here, 
but it's a strategist with two archer units. So you actually want to draw him out to attack you, and he will because he thinks he can beat you, even though there's no way. And then next turn, Yan Baihu can march over as a reinforcement, and together they can take the fishing port with ease as we try to reset our army for uh, actual army buildup to attack the town here. Uh, the town's not too hard. You can beat it with two uh, poison volley generals, but you might as well start building your army about that time. Um, over here, we have the conversion started, and we can also start at the same time building our first building, which is the tribute hall here. We mentioned earlier why. And we can trigger that next turn and start our build up in three different commanderies, so we can take full advantage of the bonuses we can get from uh, your economy girls. So uh, we're set up here. We'll let that fight happen and we're good to go. All right, right on cue, they come out to attack us. There's no way they win because you just run after the archers and they don't fire and you just kill them and then you kill a sentinel. And plus you have poison volley, so hard to lose. We'll cut this one out to save time. Alrighty, easy fight. And the general is going to retreat back to the county to defend. We're just going to release. We want the income. And we want income here as well. Alrighty, we triggered your Kami Groves, like we said. Our next is Growing Might. We need to recruit two more units. Very simple. We'll use this to uh, build up our army. And we can actually build up our army pretty cheaply uh, if we trigger the missions in the right order. We'll talk about that a bit later. Now we're going to have to put ourselves on March to be able to reach that, uh, but she's going to start that siege. Why is she mad? Hmm. We'll give her an item for now. Now I'm going to wait for Yan Baihu to show up as well to get some experience. We also have a general available. Um, Liu Fan might be the only one I'm interested in here, but even and I'm not that interested. And your pool is going to be very different with each game. So uh, Now, most southern generals are very likely to show up. So people like Liu Fa and Zhou Tai, who start without a faction in the 190 start, it's highly likely they'll join you. And you can be on the lookout for good administrators as well. So she has a clerk bonus. So she could potentially be a good heir that you could throw in right away, because anyone can be heir, because it says uh, you're... It's not family related. Next in line can be anyone. And Yan Yu's bonus is just not that high. So you could definitely consider replacing him if you want. Uh, you just have to keep him ha happy. So you might have to give him a title for now. Uh, but that's something else you have to worry about. And he leveled up. So at least he can give us redeployment cost discount here with that. And we're going to jump in here. And we're going to fight this. Um, I'm going to cut it out. It's just going to be a lot of Hail of Arrows. Even though it's a fishing port and has um, towers, you can capture those easily with stock. So let's go. Alrighty. Very simple fight. And here we're just occupying as well. Now, ideally, we want to convert this. Uh, but your economy grow has triggered already. So it's better to actually build first because you get more discount on these. The conversion, like we mentioned, is not uh, you know discounted by that. So we want to get this building started. Over here, we want to build our level one weapon craftsmen, so we can start getting weapons. Over here, we want the level one uh, livestock farm as well. And these two generals have served their purpose here. We're actually going to recall them for now and reset them closer to where we want to attack Poyang's town. So Poyang's town's over here. We're going to set them up in the copper mine in the future. Uh, we can start summoning him first. He's going to lead this army. And if you want an income boost, what you can do with your new uh, armies when you summon them is just have them on share the spoils. This is a very neat trick uh, because they always come out with 60 uh, military supplies or loot in this case. So we can increase our wealth here if we recruit Cheng Yu, who's not doing anything either. And uh, same thing, have him come over here, same idea, so we get uh, two sets of sharing the spoils bonus here in uh, Poyang. It's not reflected in this, but it should be. Uh, it should be giving us extra income here, and we should be able to see that during the end turn. Um, we got a title unlock, no big deal. So we have something building in all three of our commanderies, that's kind of what we want to utilize for these three turns, and we'll build up our armies afterward. Let's continue here. 
All right, so we got our first reform, and we mentioned already that we want to go north with our reform tree here, so go for this one right here. We got another item. Cool. And we got an extra assignment because we actually ranked up, even though there was no notification. We have a new underling position. We have a new incense master position. This can give us an extra 10% recruitment a discount so we actually want to kind of utilize this a little bit and we want to eventually have a uh, boy on town to have a administrator as well so maybe this is the time we actually recruit someone uh be fun perhaps because he does start with quite a bit of a level up here plus three so alternatively i could just swap him because Xingdu doesn't need a administrator per se uh, Poyang is going to be our major economic center, so there's an advantage there. I don't think anyone has any good administrative trait. He has a bunch of them. That's why I want to move him. Okay, so I think what, that's what we will do. We'll take advantage of that later. Uh, they're GD low GD on um, military supplies. That's fine. Yeah, we ended up boosting. It just didn't reflect last turn, but we got extra income here because of the sharing the spoils. But that is coming to an end here as he is going to go into enemy territory and he is going to go into raid so that we can get our supplies back he is going to recruit our other two generals real quick uh yen bai hu and so what happens here when we have four generals is we trigger growing might right which is something that we want to do uh to save up for our replenishment bonus so we actually might not have him on the field right now because we're not ready to build an army yet we want to time everything just perfect so he's gonna come back but he's gonna raid because we want him to have full military supply so that we can share the spoils not for income but for replenishment sake when we go for our first army uh, but meanwhile we're gonna continue to build up so we want to black market everywhere. That's what you want to do after you get level 1 buildings. You want to get black market in all your little mini commanders here, uh, com uh, county building here. And then you want to go back to leveling things up afterward. So that's all three builds. We're saving money for our first army. He is still a little bit unhappy with us because low loot level. Well, it's going to bounce back, so nothing to worry about here. Let's continue. Alrighty, this is the last turn of our economy grows. We're going to come in here and finish up our black market where we can. And here where we can't, we're not going to waste a turn converting. We're going to upgrade uh, the counties. County economy is where you're going to get most of your uh, income in the beginning. So we're going to upgrade that. Seems like Wallon has chased the yellow turbans out. This army is not that threatening. Uh, the garrisons for the bandit faction is actually pretty strong, so you can definitely hold if they attack, but they're probably not going to attack. They're just going to run away. And that's it. I think we have building going up in all three counties. They're getting full loot very soon, so we will be able to uh, trigger everything together uh, next turn. So we should actually send him out this turn. So he's going to trigger growing might for us by being the fourth general or fourth unit on the map. And might as well have him boost money again. So you see you can summon in and summon out to always reset the loot. You can always do the share the spoils right away. Anyhow, uh, building's good, air is good. Alright, let's continue here. Alrighty, we trigger growing might. So we get three turns of plus 10% replenishment and also extra experience. And our next mission is to capture Singdu's fishing port, which we already have, and to hold six uh, four settlements, but due to our rapid expansion strategy, we already have six. Uh, so this is going to trigger next turn, I believe. So we'll get 20% recruitment cost discount. If we can get some sort of diplomacy or deal done, we can trigger it this turn, which is kind of what we want to happen. So go back to normal. We just need something to reset it. So perhaps we can get a non-aggression with Wang Wang. He's not very rich, so he's unlikely to pay you a lot for this. But... We can try both to see which one's more reasonable. So I'm, I'm guessing it's this one. He just doesn't have a lot of per turn. Oh, we had it. Okay. Right, so we're just going to ask for this. 
Now, you could also check for coalition. His price should have come down quite a bit from 7.9 to 0.2. So if you want to get a coalition, now is the time to do so. Or you can wait even a little bit longer because it's still trending up. And eventually this will be even positive. And especially after you get an army, he's going to be scared of you a little bit more. And because we did some sort of uh, deal, it checks for the mission completion. And we get this 20% recruitment cost right away. The next one is just to gain another rank. Uh, very straightforward. Six more turn of uh, cost reduction. He did his job. We can level him up and just re summon him back. Uh, before we do that, actually, we're going to pop him over as our incense master. I uh, know we're, we're taking him away from Xingdu, right? Uh, we should probably get a building in before. Actually, we don't need to. We're doing the conversions. He's done his purpose. We want him in Poi on going forward. So we put him as Incense Master to get ourselves extra 10% recruitment cost discount. Plus the 20% we have here. Plus the extra replenishment. So we can get ourselves a pretty nice army right now. And as you can see, this is what I'm talking about. You have access to this faction unique unit. But the White Tiger Raiders are not here for some reason. I don't know why. Um, must be a bug in my opinion. I don't know why show unavailable. White Tiger Raiders. See, here they are. I don't know why we can't recruit them. Rank 4. Okay, maybe this has always been the case and it's just a typo on the faction select screen. That explains why we can't recruit them. We're not high enough rank. Uh, that's totally fine. While we're lower rank, we'll just recruit these guys. I don't need to show unavailable. We'll go with uh, 6 of these. Uh, you could run 6 of them on her as well, but she currently doesn't have Poison Arrow, so it's not going to be as effective. So I'm going to just opt away from that and instead we can get ourselves some cheap cavalry. These cavalry are really cheap in terms of recruitment cost right now uh, since we have such low recruitment cost. We have like, you know, 30% basically going on right now. So might as well get this. If you want to give your generals titles, you can give them the general of the left and general of the right uh, to kind of make them happy at the same time. And also, all right, fine, we'll get the most discount we can get. So we go first with General of the Left. And then he can recruit even cheaper cavalries. He can recruit even cheaper archers. Uh, you could have her recruit some of these because uh, they will be given, uh, well, not faction, not retinue wise stock. So I guess that doesn't work. Yeah, I think we're just going to leave her alone and let her do her poison volley if she gets injured we just summon her back and heal her and after you recruit your army swap him to general of the right it's a very neat trick and now all your units have upkeep discounts perfect switch your stance since we're full loot now to share the spoils so that they can have 25 percent more replenishment you see the total here is now 59 percent uh, you can go over 50 because we have 10 percent of it is mustering Without mustering, it's 49%, uh, which is pretty much near max, but mustering can bring you over 50%. So two turns to full health. This guy served his purpose. We're going to recall him. Uh, army's ready. I think we have buildings going in all of the commanderies. He's just running away. We don't have to mind him, and we can continue here. Alrighty, Sun Jian dies to an event. Makes it easier to kill his faction off. One less legendary general to deal with. We don't need that general. And we leveled up to rank 3. He now has reach. We can probably uh, start looking to recruit you know, other generals so that we can have assignment characters going forward. Just because we have a very thin roster right now. But we're just waiting for them to replenish up. Um, if you want, you can actually just go on the offensive on this turn because you don't have to wait till they're fully healed to take this town it's very simple you can always heal up after you take it so might as well get moving right now same thing spam the black markets you don't have enough money to upgrade the final tier get some better weapons so we can't really put we we can put him on assignment, but we shouldn't because we're moving him back into administrative role in Poyang very soon. We're just currently putting him as our uh, incense master for now. So let's continue here. Uh, we 
Yeah, we're not recruiting him. All right, Wang Long's offering us a mercenary contract against Huang Shao. We're gonna pass on this because we want to peace out with Dong Zhuo and start uh, fighting people for Dong Zhuo. Alrighty, we ranked up. Uh, so got more money here. Got more momentum. So more turns of cheap recruitment in case we want to bulk, bulk up this army even more. But first, we're gonna take this town here. We can delegate. It probably won't even actually lose us any men. Uh, 50 men. Okay, we have some cavalry in the front getting killed. That's fine. We'll just occupy here. And we have a random mission that we triggered so we can gain public order, which is actually not a good thing. Inspire garrison, increase recruitment. So we want replenishment for our own army. So we're going to persuade them. And by who leveled up. Okay, so now we can get bravery. Which gives us charge negate on our own retinue, which is awesome. Patience also good in case you want to capture enemy generals. Uh, but we're going to go with bravery for now. We're going to move our army out. It's always a good habit. And you always want to share the spoils to increase replenishment. See, we hit the max 50. Uh, so it's pretty good. You can, if you want, uh, swap these out for your white tiger raiders. Uh, they are pretty strong uh, they're better than uh, these bandit archers it's just going to be another uh, set of expenses for you depending on uh, whether you want to splurge on them right now or not but i would actually i would actually do it because they are pretty good and uh before you do it you might want to you might want to just do it this turn while you have 30 percent recruitment cost right now so just swap these guys out Now, if you don't want to pay twice, you can potentially just fight this with just the cavalry and the generals. And then uh, once you finish the fight, recruit these fresh. But I just learned the level four thing, so I don't really plan out for that. There we go. Now, what makes these guys so special is because if you look at here, you have first shield wall with your spears. So you only can use this when you're in the forest. They're kind of these ambusher units, but they counter cavalry. Uh, pretty much with shield wall they have uh, stock meaning they can be hidden on any terrain they also have snipe which means when they fire they still are not revealed and they also have poison shot so just a great unit overall and everything will heal up nicely we have the town we can destroy the patrol get the refund on that we can actually get rid of this as well these are building now it's time to swap him in here into Poya. There we go. We ranked up again, so we have more positions. Uh, this one gives extra food and loot. This one gives extra uh, loot from income, extra post battle loot, extra redeployment cost discount. This is actually the only one worth using early on, and I probably recommend using either her. Anyone will actually do, it's fine, uh, because uh, preferably the best move is actually move Yan Yu down here and find a better heir because he just doesn't provide enough uh, good bonuses as the air position uh, right now so if you find a better air just shift him down and it's a very good set of bonuses potentially you don't want her there just because she could potentially make a decent underling right now because there's a cost discount on her you could throw her back into Xingdu if you want that kind of keep her happy uh, so you can kind of shuffle around the court whichever way you like but we're not going to worry about that because we're wrapping our guide out right now uh, we're not going to take any more turns what you want to do at this moment uh, is to continue to build up this force. I believe Lady Wu usually comes out towards Poyao about now. So maybe in a turn or two, her army will be there. So you want to move your army closer to that point. And at the same time, if we try to negotiate a peace deal with Dong Zhuo, it's not that expensive. It's down to 18.1. If you wait longer, it's trending lower. So it's going to actually be cheaper. But you could potentially sets yourself up with a trade deal you have tons of auxiliary items you can actually use you can take off his horse so we're gonna showcase this real quick take off the horse is useless sadly you cannot trade the bow for some reason which is really dumb in my opinion since he has general to the left this item is useless he doesn't need to carry it um she eventually might become administrator so once again you don't need to give her item builder is very useful he doesn't need anything 
And our other diplomatic trip that we have is we have tons of food. Bandit make a lot of food from the counties. So you can trade those. Uh, we want to trade Anzuri item. Give him the silver horse. All these items that we're not using right here. And I kind of want a trade deal as well. And we'll offer him a bunch of food. So I'm trying to find where it goes to like 0.5 jumps. To okay, there we go. So seven's kind of the optimum level, and the rest we'll pay with uh, cash here. He might ask for a bunch because he's pretty rich. That's fine. We can afford it. There we go. All right, peace deal sign with Dondrua. The reason why we want to sign this peace deal and the trade is we can now help him fight people. Every faction we meet in the future, like Sun Jian is probably at war with Dong Zhuo already. So we can make him pay us to fight them. So this is very useful to have Dong Zhuo set up as your mercenary master going forward. We're probably going to meet Sun Jian right away as we dispute over the iron mine here. And you can let their army take it. You can just put your army here and wait, wait till they come take it, because usually that's in the AI expansion pass. And the second they take it, you attack them, you set up the mercenary treaty, and the, you know the game flows pretty easily over there. And then you just continue on, destroy Sun Jian's faction, which is very small right now. They probably only have the trade port, the town, and probably the tea. And you grab all of this, grab the armor smith as well, and just continue to build up in the south. And we are saving Liu Yao for a bit later because we want him to build up that city over there with a higher level state workshop. And I mentioned this already at the beginning. But moving on, you know, you have a very easy game ahead of you as you already have a pretty big buildup. Uh, in terms of your territories and uh, you're pretty much max build as well there's only three levels to all these counties so you're close to being max build and you just want to recruit more characters and use them to share the spoils within uh, poyang to generate a lot of income each uh, share the spoil right now is extra 400 income and the higher uh, you know you move your banditry income in each of these counties are my included and you want to build a bandit building here you want to build a tribute hall here you're going to make more and more money here and this one commander here alone is probably going to be able to support multiple armies uh, in your uh, conquest so hope you guys enjoyed this guide and we'll see you all next time bye